Hello, my crafty loving friends. Welcome to A Purpose My Way. I'm Shelly. I'm so glad you're here. Today we're going to make some grubby candle jars from these baby food jars, and they have the lids and everything. I have two different sizes. I have these little, little guys, and I have the big ones. And I'm pretty excited to do this. I've done a few, and just to make sure that the style is what I want, and now I want to show you guys how I did it. So this one is one that I did earlier. I spray painted the top black and I grubbied the jar. I made up my own label and then I used some raffia and put it around the top. These labels will be on my Etsy shop and there will be six to a page. They are two inches tall and three inches wide. They say the Crow and the Candle Company, the Crow and Candle Company, established 1845. It's just something I made up. And then on the back, uh, or in the background, it looks kind of like a crackle or lines uh, on it just to give it some old look to it. So the first thing I'm going to do to these jars is put my Mod Podge that I have on the spot where I want to put my labels. We're going to put those on first and let them dry a little bit before we go on to grubbing the jars. So I always put my Mod Podge in a separate little dish when I'm going to be grubbing. This is a really messy process and I don't want it going in my big jug of Mod Podge. So, uh, and because it will just mess up the whole thing and then if I want to use it for something else, it'll be full of my spices. So I don't want that to happen, so I always use a separate one. So I'm just going to cut up these labels that I have, and I have four of them, so I'm going to cut those up and do four jars today. Now the little small jars I'm not going to do any labels on. I'll probably just wrap some twine around them. I think that'll be fine, and uh, we'll just grubby those up, and it'll look fine. So I have my antique glaze or antique wax. This is a grayish color. I'm putting a little bit on a rag. You could use a paintbrush if you wanted to, if you wanted to do this part. Now this part is just making the label look a little more aged and distressed. So I just put it on a little bit around the edges and then I, sl I slowly brush it in near the middle and then I just wipe it back. So it gives it a aged look without getting it really wet. This one here I did before and that's how I made that label look darker and more distressed. Or you could do it just the regular label that you print off your printer. I use regular print printer paper for this. I did not do anything special. You could use tissue paper if you wanted to but I uh, just use regular paper, printer paper. So it's up to you on whether you want to distress your labels or not. Uh, you, could, you could tear the edges and make them look a little more ragged. When I go to grubby this, it's going to go up around the edges of this label. That's why I made it a little bit longer so that when I grubby it will uh, go over those edges so you can't see see them. Now I'm taking my paintbrush and I'm just taking some more Mod Podge and I'm going over the label so that it will stay down. And we're going to let that dry a little bit. We do not want to put on the grubby mixture with the label still wet because it will stick to the label and we don't want that. I want to be able to see the label that I made. So uh, I'm taking my dryer, my heat gun, and I'm just drying it a little bit. And then I'll just probably set it aside and let it dry on its own for a little bit. It doesn't have to be completely dry. It can be still a little bit tacky because when it's tacky, you could still brush it off if you get any of the grubby mixture on there. But I really recommend to let it dry all the way if you can. So while I'm waiting for those, I'm going to do my little jars just for something to do. And I want to see how they will look. I'm sure they'll be super cute. But um, 
I'm just doing the same process here. I'm going all over the jar and I'm careful not to go up on the threads of the jar where the cover would go on so that the cover will still go on the jar. I have them outside. I've sprayed them with black, flat black spray paint and they're drying. So once they're dry, I'll seal them and then I can put them on the top. But if they have any of the Mod Podge or the grubby mixture, they're not going to go on very well. And if you get it on there, you can just take your finger and wipe it and it usually comes off pretty easily. Uh, or you could scrape it if it's dried on. It's really not that hard. But this is my grubby mixture. I do have a video uh, that I put out on making uh, or doing grubby candles and some wooden stars and things like that that I will link in the description down below. You guys can check that out if you're interested. But my grubby mixture is mostly nutmeg, uh, pumpkin spice, um, trying to think what everything is in there, coffee, cinnamon, all the yummy smelling spices. I just pour them all in together. I get them from Dollar Tree and some instant coffee. The only change that I have made from that video till now is adding more coffee to my mixture. I made up a little bit more of my grubby mixture and I added a bunch more coffee. I like my grubby mixture a little darker. The previous one that I had was a little more lighter. It looked more like just a lot of cinnamon, which it did have, and not enough coffee. So I added more coffee, which actually gives it more bumps and uh, just more texture to it, and I like that look. Of course, play with your mixture however you like it. If you don't like it with as many coffee bumps in it or as dark as it is, you can always go lighter. Find a lighter spice like pumpkin spice and do a bunch of that if you want to. I decided that while I was doing this, I had seen a bunch of people use the cinnamon mixture, just cinnamon without anything else in it to uh, do rust and grubby up their, their uh, projects. So I'm going to do that today. I'm going to use my grubby mixture and then one of the jars I'm going to use just cinnamon so that we can see what it's going to look like. So basically I just coat the whole jar with the Mod Podge and then I take my grubby mixture and just sprinkle it over the top. Every once in a while I will kind of pat it down and make sure that the mixture is stuck on if it looks like it's not sticking very well. But for the most part I just sprinkle it on and that's all it takes. And then just let it dry just for a little bit before you put the finishing coat over the top. So here I went all over the whole thing and now I'm taking my grubby mixture and moving my <laughs> Mod Podge so it doesn't get any in there. It kind of gets everywhere. So The other thing that I wanted to mention was using these uh, trays or using something with a lip on it or a tray that will catch your grubby mixture. Uh, it really is a big, huge help to uh, catch all of that because once you're done, you can take that and pour it back into your bag so that you don't uh, have to waste any of it. And this also works well because you'll have a little bit of glue at the bottom of your jars and it will stick to whatever you have underneath. So to have it on this pan works really well. So here's just straight ground cinnamon that I'm going to use on this jar so that you can see the difference of what it would look like. This might be something that you'd be more interested in instead of the mixture that I have. You might like it a little lighter and a little more rusty looking. Um, so I'm just taking my finger around the label and just kind of brushing it away. You also could use just a little tiny dry paintbrush and just brush all the cinnamon or your mixture away so that you can see your label. Just rolling around getting it stuck on there really well. Go, making sure all the little spots are done. 
your child definitely looks a little darker and that's a little lighter. Okay, so this is what I meant about the pan. It just is a lot easier for cleanup if you can have something underneath your, your work area. This makes it so much easier. Then you just put your jars back on there so that they will dry and not stick to whatever's underneath. And I'm going to cover these uh, little jars first while we're waiting for the other ones just to sit for a little while. They don't have to sit and totally dry, but I do like to let them sit a little bit. Here I'm showing you there's a bunch of the uh, rubby mixture in my Mod Podge, and I wanted you guys to see how messy it gets. So if you actually took it out of the big container, it would just be full of that mixture, and it would just mess up your next projects if they didn't have the grubby mixture on top of it. So to apply this, I do a tamping process. If you start off just totally brushing it on like you're painting it, it doesn't work very well. Uh, it kind of brushes it off instead of sticking. So you kind of have to just tamp it on. You tamp that Mod Podge over the top and you just keep doing that and then after you get a little bit on there you can brush it. It's almost like it has to get wet first but that's all I do. I just tamp it on and then brush it back and I try to get any excess Mod Podge off. Sometimes that can happen that you'll get gobs of Mod Podge over the top of your uh, project and you, it will take a lot longer to dry. So I just finished up the other jar and now I have these luminescence vanilla scented candles. I love the smell of these and I grubby these up uh, just on their own. But today I'm going to melt these down so that I can put them into my candle jars. These I get from Dollar Tree. So I'm just taking all of the wrapping off and the bottom sticker so that I can remove the wick. I'm going to reuse the wick. Now I thought this was going to be a smart thing to do, but unfortunately that wick is so short that it's a lot shorter than the jar that I have. So I'm going to have to add a little bit of wax to the bottom of the jar, let it harden, then put my wick on because I don't have any longer wicks. So I'm just putting this in an old pot that I have. Don't mind my dirty stove. I have been canning all week long, so it is probably a disaster. So once that's melted down, I'm just taking a little bit of the wax and pouring it in the bottom. Probably about, uh, I would say probably about an inch, inch and a half of wax. And that'll lift that wick up from the bottom so that it will stick out of the top. So I put those in the freezer to harden and that worked really good. Now I'm going to take my wick and put it down and stick it to the bottom. This one had a little dip in it, so it kept sliding down in the dip. And then eventually, uh, it kept doing it. Eventually, I just let it go. I'm just like, fine, you want to go down in the dip, go. <laughs> I was trying to fight it, and it just didn't want to didn't want to work with me. So, But I'm trying to get them in the middle, and then I will take some painter's tape, and I'm going to tape off a little grid so that those will stay in mostly in the middle. But just a little bit of glue, stick those down, and then I'm going to finish uh, pouring in the rest of the wax all the way to the top. And you'll see the wicks will be falling over because once the hot wax hits it, it melts that glue. Uh, but I'm going to, again, I'm going to make a grid with some painter's tape, and that's going to hold those in the middle and should hold them down and be okay. So this is what I meant by making a grid. So I just take a piece of uh, the tape and ripping it in half and I'm going on either side of the wick to hold it on there. 
I was going to use some skewers that I had, but there really isn't enough of a wick there to get the skewers to hold it. So this one gave me a little bit of a hard time. But uh, I'm just putting tape on either side, and then I'll rip off another piece and crisscross over that one. And just trying to keep that wick in the middle so that it doesn't flop over to the side. So I've got all four of those done. And the next thing that I'm going to do is pop them in the freezer and hope that they freeze up quickly. So they did, but they got a hole in the middle around the wick. So I melted down some more of the wax. I had a little bit left. And I'm going to pour that down in the center of the candles. So once the wax gets solid, you can see on the top where I've poured a few different times and it's not very uh, smooth. So in order to smooth it down, I take my heat gun and I just hold it on, you know, above the jar just for a few seconds and it starts to melt that wax and smooth it out so it's a nice top on there and it's not all bumpy. Now these previous ones that I've done, I used the raffia around them. These new jars that I did, I decided I wanted to use some coffee stained uh, cheesecloth that I had and um, just cutting down a one piece to cover the lid and then I'll wrap it with some twine. I really wish I'd taken some time with this cheesecloth and uh, dipped it in the coffee mixture again. It, I don't feel like it was dark enough for me. It was just a little yellow and I wanted it a little darker, but uh, I think that'll work for now. Just for demonstration purposes anyway. So I'm just taking some of this twine. I got this off Amazon for a really good deal. I post it in my community uh, and I just thought I would share that so I will put the link down in the description if I, I will put the link there anyway but hopefully the sale is still going on it was a pretty good deal so I got a thousand feet of twine so <laughs> I shouldn't run out of twine very soon but um, I'd hate to think of how much twine I've used in the past it's so crazy how many feet would that be <laughs> But anyway, I just wrapped that around a few times and then uh, did a little bow on the front just to make it look cute and just zhuzhed it up a little bit. And there you go. There's a cute little candle jar. So I wanted to show you now that they're sealed and dry that the one on the right that I'm moving there is the grubby mixture that I make up and the one on the left here is the cinnamon mixture. The, of course the texture is different because I have chunks of coffee in there or grounds and then the cinnamon is just the cinnamon bumpiness so there's your difference between the two. I hope you love my grubby candles. These were a lot of fun 
and I have a lot more jars so I'll be making a bunch more up. Let me know down in the comments if you've done this before and if you use a grubby mixture like I do or if you use cinnamon. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.